Ever wondered why some traders consistently outperform the market while others don't? Well, today I'm revealing a simple but powerful secret, a trading strategy using pivot points and moving averages, but not the way you learn them. So if you're ready to learn and reap consistent profits like other traders, strive for the financial freedom and work from anywhere in the world, well then buckle up because this video could be a game changer for you. Since I'm a swing trader at heart, we're going to have a look at the higher time frame pivot points first and understand how to utilize them. And after you have a good understanding of how to utilize pivot points on the higher time frames, we're going to move to the lower time frames for scalping and day trading. This way we can cover all styles in trading. So let's begin. So there are two ways to find pivot points. One, you can calculate them yourself, but I don't recommend it because the second way is much easier. Head over to babypips.com. I'll leave a link down in the description below for this exact page. And what you will find is a lot of names, Floor, Woody, Camarilla, Denmark, or even Fibonacci. I will ignore most of them and use only the simplest one, which is the Floor pivot points. These pivot points have been proven time and time again that they react to certain market levels really, really well. And even back in the day, the big exchanges used them and likely are still using them to this day. So by following these levels, you will be able to understand market direction much more clearly. I can guarantee it. So for swing trading, keeping the trade long enough, we want strong pivot points such as the yearly. So choose the time interval for the year. Price stream has to be last closed, not real time. And then baby pips will calculate the last closed pivot point uh, of the year was 31st of December 2022. Then all we need to do is just copy the blue PP level uh, just over here. Add yourself a horizontal line tool anywhere on your chart double click on them and on the coordinate section just copy and paste what you saw in the baby pip so 116 just over here and we will name it central pivot point as you can see the central pivot line is quite far away from the candlesticks but there's a reason the main thing the central pivot point shows you is the current trend since the candlesticks are playing around below the central pivot line it should be considered as a downtrend. If the candlesticks manage to break past the central pivot line, it's on the up trend. You will very soon see how everything clicks. We just need a few adjustments. So heading over back to baby pips, what we want to do is copy the S1 level, which is the support one pivot point. Since the central pivot point at the moment is above our candlesticks, we should be looking for supports only rather than the red resistance levels. So let's add another line just over here. Double click again coordinates copy and paste them and in the text area just write support number one then we're gonna do the exact same thing for support number two as well so copy drag this along change this to support two and coordinates there we go. So we currently have the support one, support two, and the central pivot line indicating the bearish trend. Now to show an example how effective pivot points are, we need to find where the pivot point actually started. So again, just over here it says last closed 31st December 2022 at 10 p.m. GMT. Pretty much the new year. So we need to find the area where the new year started. So this red vertical line will do so essentially what the yearly pivot point does is calculate what happened over here on the left side of the red vertical line calculates all important area levels and then predicts what will happen over here and which levels will be respected this is why it's essential to have them as you can see the support level two over here was touched what happened bullish engulfing candlestick as confirmation went towards the upside to retest what the previous area of pivot level which was the support one just over here it touched it and started a consolidation zone every time it touched one of the top levels over here you could have potentially shorted this trade for a nice successful uh, selling opportunities and this is great however sometimes you're gonna have issues like this where the support level is broken suddenly right but is this actually a break? Think about it. It only broke the Euro USD four hour time frame. Our pivot point level is on the yearly. 
So what you want to do to confirm whether they actually broke this pivot level or not is head over to the higher time frames. So let's just use the replay tool. Okay, so this is the four hour. Let's head over to the daily. As you can see, the daily has broken this previous support level over here with that blue candlestick. However, if we head over to the weekly, as you can see, he has not broken it. The candlestick body did not close above this area zone. So on the weekly time frame, it's just a rejection. The candlestick wick is huge. It forms a nice shooting star pattern. It should continue moving towards the downside and likely it does. So in some cases, you might have a four hour push towards the upside looking like it broke the supported area. However, a few days passes and respects the daily or the weekly time frames which is the higher time frame bias and doesn't break the yearly pivot point level and that's why it's super important to know this now let's quickly go through and see how the pivot points reacted as you can see sometimes it's going to be near the supported pivot point level over here one two three touches went towards the upside to retest finally the supported one level sometimes this does happen but why well it's a chart pattern right you have to combine everything you cannot just simply rely on pivot points there's also trends there's also psychological levels there's also chart patterns candlestick patterns if you're making a soup you want to combine all the right ingredients to make a nice soup well it's the same with trading so sometimes it might not just retest the previous area zone but it might be near it and that's what you need to keep in your mind and plus it's not always 100 percent you know correct however if we move on we can see the supported area has been respected look at this nice rejection candlestick going towards the downside rejection down a lot of rejections and eventually if it manages to break past you know nicely it continues on pulls back continues on imagine this not being a line but being a nice area zone i like to see areas if you spot an area like this it makes much more sense rather than a clear line it's never gonna be clear and it's not likely gonna touch at the exact line straight away if you look at it as an area zone you will likely understand price action more which will help you develop your trading skills much more quicker as you can see this area zone was here it was of course consolidating and we can see now that it's moving in between the two area levels we know that this area level is the stronger one right because it's the support area of the yearly and once he has broken it push exhaustion this could have been a great trade towards the downside bearish engulfing candlestick uh, if i just zoom in real quick as you can see nice break of structure push exhaustion bearish engulfing candlestick as confirmation we are heading towards the downside beautiful trade okay now that you understand how pivot points work you know how to draw them correctly on the higher time frames at least let's talk about moving averages and why i use them if you go to tradingview.com i use the simple moving average it's called simply moving average we will need two of them the first moving average is 20 the second moving average will be 50 and now let's take a look how the moving averages are reacting let's say on the daily time frame i really like to trade the higher time frame bias because if you know what the higher time frames are doing you will kill it on the lower time frames as well and i'll get to that in just a little bit however if we have a look new year has started just over here with this red line right so these area zones are total predictions but on the daily we have 20 and 50 moving averages just right here bullish engulfing candlestick just off here breaking past the 20 moving average this is a beautiful trade it bounced off the support area two where is it going likely direction is support area one over here and that's why we saw this nice push towards the upside you could have caught that trade easily uh, let's say 1.5 risk reward obviously this is the higher time frames but it doesn't matter you could have caught this trade on the long term and you could have caught a lot of trades on the short term as well just understanding the higher time frame pivot bias and the moving averages will just continue telling you whether the trend is going towards the upside at the moment or the downside let's say we want to trade a short-term trade well maybe you don't want to trade off the support area level once it broke it right do you remember that weekly shooting start that i talked about well it happened over here right 
So if it's going towards the downside, we still have the 20 and 50 moving averages over here. They typically will act as a kind of support area level, right? Because the trend is going towards the upside. So what you want to do is wait for a break of moving averages. Just over here, it broke the 50 moving average. You could have potentially entered maybe a short term trade over here bearish engulfing candlestick and it should have went towards the downside especially if you're covering the 20 moving average as well uh, however we did have a small peak over here maybe you got stopped out that's fine if you find another one just over here another bearish engulfing candlestick break of 50 as well eventually the market will decide to drop back down to hopefully pretty much retest the support area level two if not they will find some other price action like the triple bottom over here as well which is a great indication for further bull pressure and it continued to move towards the upside and then if we move along we can see that nice kind of consolidation just over here what happened if it breaks like this maybe don't trade it still on that upwards trend right uh, maybe wait for that push after it breaks that 50 moving average push exhaustion entry over here pretty much a shooting star closure went towards the downside this is a beautiful trade this is how you can trade it sometimes it's gonna have a mid-range zone what i like to call it so somewhere in the middle it might stop in between the two points sometimes it does happen like that usually it's because of the psychological level in this case 1.0700 or something like that psychological levels everything works but let's not mix that up the overall market direction at the moment is still bearish if it breaks the 50 we still have the support area one just over here so we should be expecting maybe some bear pressure around here or here as well because that's the yearly pivot point level okay now let's understand how to day trade or even scalp uh, the mark is using the pivot points as well the time interval you want to use is the daily so we will have the last candles to close in this case we have last close 13th of june 2023 so as we can see over here we have the red vertical line just over here and we have already drawn our resistance support levels and central daily area zones as well so again we have our vertical line everything over here what happened previously we have our pivot points based for today so this is what happened today uh, we were pushing towards the upside with the two moving averages we had that uh, resistance area just over here and as you can see it did react towards it uh for a few hours at least this is the hourly time frame so for four hours and then it broke past it broke past the 50 as well this already gives you a good uh, kind of information center for you to go towards the downside since the overall market direction was up it has broken the 20 and 50 moving averages on the daily time frame what we can do is short this trading position to aim for the central daily area zone because it's the central pivot point it will also act as a kind of support and resistance area as well so something like this could be good maybe two to one to 1.5 risk reward as well is great this is the hourly let's take a look at the 15 minute time frame so ideally something like this looks pretty damn good you could potentially aim for support one because likely after the higher time frame moving averages were broken it's gonna go short a little bit more so something like this even better uh you can obviously increase the stop loss just a tad bit more for a two to one risk reward just because if the market does decide to go towards the upside you want to be covering the resistance level one as well because this will react as a new resistance area right because previous area of support was broken what happens it becomes resistance over here so let's see what happens can we touch it and it continues moving down that's how far the market goes at the moment i'm pretty much near the what the actual price levels are but just to show you an example it went towards the downside central pivot point look at this has been stopped a little bit we had some bullish pressure broke out where is the exhaustion back towards the central pivot line so previous area of support was broken became resistance just over here 
bearish engulfing candlestick likely gonna go towards the downside maybe it's gonna have an exhaustion towards the central pivot line once again and push towards the supported area level one as well so even though pivot points and moving averages are great for your trading you need to know a few other things like chart patterns and i have a video just over here to help you with them and make you become a more round and profitable forex trader enjoy